by approximately nine years. Uh, uh, teaching experience in postgraduate. And then he is also a member of uh, American Physical Society since 2010. And he is a life member under uh, Missouri Academy of Science and has produced three PhD scholar and uh, one is still undergoing, if I'm not mistaken. So he has uh, got uh, a number of publications. Uh, so uh, like in uh, international journals, he has um, 25 plus, more than 25 publication and international yeah. journal and proceeding. He has uh, 13, yeah. more than 13. Yeah. So and he has also presented an, uh, a number of uh, papers in international national uh, conference. So that is all I can say about him. So now uh, we will invite our uh, respected resource person. So all the uh, students uh, who are attending here, all the science students are uh, requested uh, to put your attendance at the end of the session. Okay, not now, but at the end of the session. So that will be taken as your attendance. So, Sir Remruata, if you are available, uh, we will hand over yes, the yes. time to yours, and then we will have interaction at the end of the students uh, at the end of the session. So all the students are uh, requested, or you are free free to ask anything and. Uh, uh, um, leave a question at the chat box if you have anything to ask. All right, sir, the time is yours. Okay, then let me share my screen first. Make it uh, host disabled participant screen sharing is there. I cannot share my screen. Yes, it's coming, sir. Okay. Oh, they can have full screen them, oh? Oh, full screen, yes, sir. I think. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Becky, for nice introduction, and Pusila Rosama for, and all the organizing committee for organizing these two days national webinar on science in everyday life, organized by Department of Physics, Government Shellship College. So tonight, our topic will be the role of nuclear physics in a society. Initially, I was asked to give a talk on role of science in a society, but I thought it would be too vast. I requested the organizers to change it to the role of nuclear physics in society, so they agreed, and I'm very grateful to them. So the contents of my talk will be introduction. Here, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce, since our topic is role of nuclear physics in a society. So I would like my part uh, all the participants and the audience to at least know what is nuclear physics so that we can uh, have a more under, uh, understandable uh, reasoning in the, the topic. Then we'll move on to the role of nuclear physics in the society. Basically, I'll concentrate on the nuclear energy production, the health, the nuclear medicine and health related diagnostics, and national security and defense, and nuclear physics for archaeology, geology, etc., and nuclear physics for food preservation. And then I'll try to complete, uh, I'll try to conclude uh, our <clears throat> talk. 
So when you think about nuclear science or nuclear physics in general, what comes into our mind is, the first thing that comes into our mind is always about the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the nuclear plant accidents like uh, Chernobyl nuclear reactor accidents in the 1986 and the Fukushima nuclear accidents in the 2011. Those are the things that comes into our mind. And because of that, <clears throat> there is fear among the general public. For example, MRI, which is known as magnetic resonance imaging, is actually working under the principle of NMR, which is nuclear magnetic resonance. But the word nuclear was removed because it was believed that many people would be scared to undergo imaging if the nuclear what is there. So in the past hundred years, nuclear physics influences our daily lives through advances in technology, health, energy production. And it is often misunderstood by the general public. Many of us are not aware of the tremendous impact it has on our society. So nuclear physicists like me can have a huge positive impact when they interact or when they actively engage the public and schools with this particular topic. So in India and all over the world, nuclear physics remains a strong area of fundamental research into understanding the structure of our physical world and nuclear reactions power stars generating energy and forming the chemical elements we find in nature. In fact, we know, we all know that our sun, which is the biggest, uh, which is the nearest star from our planet is actually a giant fusion reactor fusing hydrogen uh, nucleus and producing enormous amount of energy. And <clears throat> nuclear physics also helps us understand how the heavy elements, all the elements, not only the present uh, element to even the heaviest elements like bismuth are formed, they are formed by nuclear reaction mechanisms in stars or in a supernova by fusion reactions. So nuclear physics, as we know it today is more than a hundred years old. If you remember in, nine, in 2009, <clears throat> we celebrated the centenary of the publication of in Yes, sir, we can okay, hear you. Sir. Yeah. We can hear you. Okay. In 2009, we celebrated the centenary of the publication of the results of Geiger and Marsden experiment performed at the University of Manchester under the guidance of Sir Rudolf Ford. So we'll, I'll, before we go to the role of nuclear physics into our societies. To explain what is nuclear physics, we'll dwell a little uh, for, for a few minutes regarding this particular experiment performed by uh, Geiger and Marsden at the University of Manchester. So nuclear reactors and particular accelerators are the tools to study nuclear physics, and they are also the technology. So you know that in India also we have more than 30 plus reactors and many more are being constructed. And we have so many uh, particular accelerators which are used for medical purposes as well as for research. And here, here is the one, one important document which is International Atomic Energy Agency Policy Document which was published in two, 2017. In this document, all the existing and upcoming particle accelerators in India are listed. So for those who are interested, you can download it from IA website. It is free of course. And all the machine uh, specifications 
their use and their dedicated research are listed in this particular document. So the discovery of nucleus was made by Hans Geiger and Arnest Marsden in 1909 when they performed this gold foil experiment in collaboration with Rutherford in which they fire a beam of alpha particles. That is alpha particle is a thing, but a bare helium nucleus. You all know helium. So this is the experiment. Here they, they, they put their radioactive source, which is emitting alpha particles. And here they have a, coll a collimator, collimator, and then the beam of alpha particles uh, bombarded these very, very thin gold foils. The gold foil is very thin, it's micrometer thick. It is thinner than uh, your hair because it has to be thin because the alpha particles are also very heavy and they should be able to penetrate through this thin foil and go to the detector. So they here they build <clears throat> a zinc sulfide scintillation detector. And what it does is if a charge, charge alpha, alpha particle is a positive charged particle, if this positive charge particle hits the zinc sulfide screen, then it illuminates, it glows, then you can see, then you can know that the charge particle hits there. So in this experiment, what they observe is they observe that these positively charged alpha particles are also kicked back in the backward direction. So this is very totally unexpected uh, at, in, in those days. And then <clears throat> it took uh, quite a few days for Ernest Rutherford to explain this phenomenon. And he, he then suggested that there must be a positively charged dense medium or dense uh, uh, particle which is kicking back these positive charged particles. Because in physics, you know, like charge repel and unlike charge attract. So if positive charge alpha particles are kicked back, then there must be some very, very dense positive charge particles, charge nucleus or something, which should be there in the gold foil, which then kicks back in the backward direction. So then he termed the coil, uh, uh, he, he coined the term nucleus and that led to the discovery of this nucleus. So this is the starting point of nuclear physics. So here you see here you see the structure of the atom where you have this is actually a carbon a carbon atom where you have six positive charged protons and six neutrons which are neutral particles and six electrons are revolving around this nucleus and this is the nucleus uh, which kicks back the alpha particles in that gold foil experiments so these Neutrons and protons, they are bound together by a force known as a nuclear force, which is also known as a strong force, which is almost, which is almost 2,000 times stronger than the ele electromagnetic force that binds these electrons and protons in this atom. So this is the nucleus that, uh, uh, which was discovered in that experiment. So since we're going to talk about isotopes in the next few slides, so let me also explain a little bit about isotopes. Here is the hydrogen isotopes. We have three types of hydrogen. One is the proteum, which is one H, one case. We have one single pro proton as a nucleus and one electron is revolving around it. And this is a deuterium, which is having one neutron and one proton in the as a nucleus and one electron is revolving around it. And this is one of the most simple case, the simple uh, system where you can study the properties of the nuclear force. And in, in those days, 
in the early days of nuclear physics, many, many scientists were working on this deuterium problem. You might have come across it uh, in your 11, 12, or even in your BSc course. Because they, they thought that uh, the nuclear force is additive, and if they could solve this neutron and proton, uh, uh, one proton and one neutron case, they thought that they will be able to explain all the properties of the nucleus, like uranium, which is having 238 uh, nuclei, uh, nuclei, nucleons. <clears throat> but later on, it turns out that nuclear force is not uh, just additive, but there are also things like a three body forces, four body forces, and many, many body forces. So things got complicated. This is another hydrogen uh, isotope, which is 1H3. This is having one proton and two neutrons, and one electron is revolving around this. And so when we say isotopes, what change is the number of neutrons. Here, no, there is no, no, no neutrons. Here we have one neutron, and here we have two neutrons. So the number of protons remains the same, but the number of new, neutrons changes in the isotopes. So what is nuclear physics? Nuclear physics is just the study of a nucleus and its interaction with particles and other nuclei. Here I give two uh, examples of a nuclear reaction in which I bombarded a tritium, a tritium target with a deuterium target. By fusing these two together, I can create a helium-4. I can form I can produce a helium-4, 2HE4, plus one neutron. Or if I bombard a deuterium with a deuterium, I can also create plus one neutron. So in, in, in this way, uh, we, we, we have all these heavier elements by fusion reactions in the stars or in the supernova. And by the way, this two particular reactions are one of the two famous neutron sources we have in, uh, in our planet. So now, since we have been introduced to what is nuclear physics, so now we'll go to the role of nuclear physics in our society. So in this section, I'll try to provide an overview of some of the ways in which nuclear physics is being applied to address the nation's challenge in nuclear energy, health, homeland and national security, and some of the innovations taking place in developing and exploiting new technologies arising from nuclear science. Let me start with uh, energy production. In our planet, you know, <clears throat> we all know that we have five types of uh, Energy, pro energy producing uh, systems. One is the thermal, which is using a coal. We burn a coal, then we boil the water and the steam coming out from that one high, highly pressurized steam is used to uh, drive the turbines, which is connected to an, uh, a generator producing electric power. The second one is solar and wind. You all are very much familiar with this. The third one is hydro by using the water flow. <clears throat> and the next one is nuclear. And the last one is gas and diesel. So you can see that apart from solar, all these wind, hydro, thermal, nuclear, and gas and diesel are basically producing the energy in the same way by Utilizing the heat they produce will boil the water and the steam is used to drive the turbine, which drives the generator to produce electric power. You know that uh, our coal resources, gas and diesel resources is depleting very, very fast. And in the next 30 years, we'll be exhausting all these resources. Apart from that, this Energy sources are responsible for our greenhouse gases, which is having, uh, giving havoc to our climate. And now we all experience the climate change. So we need to abandon all this, uh, whether we like it or not. 
not only because uh, there will be scarcity in the near future, but because of the greenhouse gas they produce. And you know, solar is very much dependent on the, the climate. Also, if the sun does not shine, then you cannot produce any energy. Similarly, with the wind, if the wind does not blow, then you cannot produce anything. Similarly, for hydro, suppose there is a draft. So it all depends on the, the weather and the climate. So the only reliable, viable option we have for the future is basically the nuclear energy power source. To drive and to cater to the needs of our development for the future. <clears throat> so in nuclear energy production, there are two types of nuclear process which can produce energy. You all know very well, the first one is a uh, fission reaction where a heavy nucleus splits into two nuclei with smaller mass numbers like uranium or plutonium uh, splitting into smaller uh, elements. And then the second one is a fusion reaction, which is by fusing or by combining two light nuclei to form a heavier nucleus. All these works, uh, all these energies are produced basically by uh, these uh, famous Einstein's equations, the mass, the conversion of mass into energy, which is E is equal to mc squared. And the sun converts around 4 million tons per second. If we look at the energy equivalent, conventional versus nuclear, you can imagine, you can see that 10,000 tons of coal is equal to just 500 kg of uranium in terms of energy equivalent, or it is equal to just only 62.5 kg of thorium. You know, one gram of uranium is equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.2 to 10 to the power 23 atoms. If it's of this uranium, if it's of these atoms uh, undergo fission, and you know, per fission, we have 200 MeV out of one fission. So you can multiply and you can see that even one gram of uranium is producing enormous amount, 6.2 into 200 into 10 to the power 23 mega electron volt of energy. <clears throat> so they're highly efficient. So in India, since the time of uh, Homi Baba, uh, we have this three-stage nuclear power program. And currently we are in the second, uh, in the stage two. So initially what was done was we built many uh, pressurized heavy water reactor, pressurized heavy, heavy water reactor. And these reactors are fueled by uranium. And you know, in India, we do not have uh, a good uh, uranium resources. So most of our uranium, more than 90% are imported from countries like Nigeria, USA, Russia, Great Britain, France, and Germany. So we, we use this imported uranium to run these pressurized heavy water reactors. So in these reactors, we produce about electricity of 12 gigawatts electricity. And this was done for about 30 years. And in this reactor, what we have as a byproduct is plutonium from this PHWR reactor. And we also have depleted uranium. So in the second stage, what we are trying to do is try to utilize this byproduct plutonium from the PHWR and to build a plutonium fueled reactors. And these reactors are called as fast breeder reactors because at this stage, we are using the plutonium as a fuel, but at the same time, we wanted to breed thorium into uranium because India is the second largest uh, country in plutonium resource, uh, in thorium resources. We have enormous amount of thorium. So we wanted to utilize, but thorium, Thorium-232 assets is not a fissile material. So we have to convert this thorium 
into uranium-233 by using these plutonium fuel fast breeder reactors. So these plutonium fuel fast breeder reactors will generate electricity around 300 gigawatts for the uh, around 30 years. At the same time, we'll also convert this thorium into uranium-233. So in the third stage, what we'll do is we'll use this uranium-233 fuel breeders and we'll construct these reactors, which is using uranium-233 as its fuel. At the same time, we'll also keep on converting thorium, the thorium resources we have. And we, like this, we can generate around 500 gigawatts energy, and this will last for at least the next 500 years. So we are already in a very advanced stage, the uranium-233 Kamini reactor, this uranium-233 Kamini reactor in Kalpakam is already, it is built and it is working, although it is just a research reactor, but it is one of its kind in the world. So for the students and for the uh, participants, I would also like to explain how we generate electricity in a nuclear reactors. Here we have a nuclear reactor, which is undergoing a chain reaction, producing enormous amount of heat. And when we pass water to that heat, then what we do is we boil this water and highly pressurized steam is coming in this vessel. And this drives the turbines of this generator and electricity is generated, which is fed to our homes. You can see this water is again cooled using this condenser and the same water is fed again in the same cycle continues. So this is the 2020 data. So this is the total number of, number of electricity produced by nuclear reactors. Of course, US is the highest. It is producing almost around 800,000 uh, gigawatt per hour. India, we are in the 13th position with around 40,000 gigawatt per hour. And this is also, again, the percent of electricity generated by nuclear in 2018. So Slovakia is the highest. Slovakia is producing 82.3% of all its uh, energy uh, elect electric power from nuclear reactors. France is second, and we are still very much below. So we are, India is producing only around 43, 43 terawatt uh, uh, hour in 2020 to 2021. And this contributes to only about 3.11% of the total power generation in India. Of course, 10 more reactors are under construction with a combined generation capacity of 8,000 megawatts. This will be commissioned by 2022. And by 2025, we plan to achieve, we plan to increase this person from 3.11 to at least 6 to 7 person. And we hope that we'll also be able to achieve this. Now, the second one is the second one I would like to talk about on the role of nuclear physics in a society is health issue. So, diagnosing and uh, curing med medical conditions. Nuclear physics techniques have been revolutionary in medical diagnostics and cancer therapy. And nuclear medicine, amazing and therapeutic procedures perform its year are for cardiac applications, cancer identification and therapy to diagnose Alzheimer's disease, treat hyperthyroidism, assess coronary artery disease, localize tumors, and diagnose pulmonary emboli. So to push the science of nuclear medicine further, a lot of basic research is still required at all levels. These, advance, these advances include building more and sophisticated accelerators than building uh, detectors, understanding the interaction of radiation with matter, 
and creating complex statistical algorithms for identifying relevant data. A lot of uh, research groups from different universities and from research centers are working very, very hard in this uh, <clears throat> case. And our department, in our department also, we are building one accelerator, which will be the first of its kind in the notice. And we hope to, we hope that we'll be able to uh, commission by, at least by mid uh, next year. So nuclear imaging of disease and functions. Nuclear medicine imaging involves administration of radio pharmaceuticals. Radio pharmaceuticals or medicinal radio compounds are a group of pharmaceutical drugs containing radio radioactive isotopes. This radio pharmaceutical is administered internally via injection, swallowing or inhalation. Once taken, the, the chemical moves through the body to the specific organ or tissue it is attracted to before being metabolized and excreted from the body. As the chemical moves through the body, uh, external detectors like gamma detectors are used to detect the radiation it emits, which is used to generate images of the area of interest. So this is the basic working principle of um, imaging using the nuclear instruments. The main difference between nuclear medicine diagnostic tests and other ima imaging uh, techniques is that nuclear imaging techniques show the physiological function of the tissue or organ being investigated, while traditional imaging systems such as CT scan or MRI scans show only anatomy of the structure. So most commonly used nuclear imaging machines are, the first one is called scintigraphy. This is a form of diagnostics test wherein radioisotopes are taken internally, for example, intravenously or orally, then gamma detectors or gamma cameras capture and form two dimensional images from the radiation emitted by these radio pharmaceuticals. They are injected in the bloodstream or they are uh, taken orally, then uh, they are absorbed in those particular organs where they are attracted to, and the radiation emits from those sources are then taken by the gamma source, uh, the gamma detectors, and a picture is then formed by a computer. The second one is uh, SPEC, which is single photon emission computed tomography. And in SPEC imaging, the patient is injected with a radioisotope, most commonly thallium 201, technetium 99M, M is just metal stable state, and iodine 123, and gallium 67 gallium. These are the most commonly used uh, radioisotopes in SPEC. So the radioactive gamma rays are emitted through the body as the natural decaying process of these isotopes takes place. The emissions of the gamma rays are captured by detectors that surround the body. This essentially means that the human is now the source of the radioactivity rather than the medical imaging devices, such as X-ray or CT scan, where CT scan or X-rays, they produce the uh, X-rays, uh, which is used to scan the human body. The most sophisticated and the most complicated uh, machined use in nuclear imaging is positron, positron emission uh, tomography. <clears throat> Here, we utilize a positron emitter, which is a fluorine 18 isotope. So this fluorine isotope, if it is mixed with glucose, so what we create is fluorodeoxyglucose, which can be used as a marker of metabolic utilization. Images of this activity distribution throughout the body can show rapidly growing tissue like tumor, metastasis, or infection. So again, nuclear in nuclear pharmacy, the radionucleates for nuclear medicines are produced in a particular accelerator. 
true nuclear reactions created between a specific target chemical and high speed charged particles. The number of protons in the target nuclei is changed when the nuclei are bombarded by the high speed charged particles and a new element or radionuclide is produced. So here, even in India, most of the uh, best hospitals, they also have uh, a particle accelerator like cyclotron. Many, many uh, hospitals are having these cyclotron, cyclotrons, which are used to produce these radionucleates if the patient needs it, so order is given and these radionucleates are produced in those cyclotrons and they are used for imaging and therapy. <clears throat> Again, the most commonly used radionucleate in nuclear medicine is technetium 99. Technetium 99 ex exhibits nearly ideal characteristics for use in nuclear medicine, including a relatively short physical half-life. So half-life is around 6.04 hours and it has a high yield of gamma or 98.6 percent kV low energy gamma photon. So let me just explain. Let's see 99 now. And if I count the number of gamma rays it emits, suppose it is 100 now. So after 6.04 hours, if I count again, it will be 50 only from 100 it will go down to 50, so that is known as the half-life. And then if you go to the, the, the third cycle again, then it, it, you'll get only 25, and then so on, 12.5. 12, 12 then after one day, there will be no observable uh, gamma emission. So th that is the kind of uh, characteristics we need because we do not want patients to be exposed to these harmful uh, radiations for a long period. So more than 30 different radio pharmaceuticals are used in nuclear medicines. Here I listed, these are the radio uh, pharmaceuticals. Let us say for iodine uh, uh, 131. So we use sodium iodide, hippurate. <clears throat> and for gallium 67, so gallium citrate, all these are injected into the, the blood or intravenously or uh, they are taken orally and the imaging is done with this radio pharmaceuticals. So these are the characteristics that are desirable in an imaging radio pharmaceuticals, that is ease of production and ready avail av availability, low cost, lowest possible radiation dose, and the physical half-life should be greater than the time required to prepare the material for injection, an effective half-life longer than the examination time, and suitable chemical forms for rapid localization, then low toxicity, stability, or near stability. So with this in mind, many nuclear physicists are searching for uh, possible candidates of these radionucleates and experiments are carried out every year to search for this uh, good candidate radio for ra radio nucleates. So from imaging, let us go to the therapy. Uh, you know, there are three main divisions of radiation therapy. One is external beam radiation therapy or teletherapy, where uh, the external beam is used to irradiate the tumor or uh, the patient. And the second one is bracket therapy or seal source radiation therapy. In this case, the person, the patient is totally inside this machine and the full body is irradiated with this radiation. The third one is systematic radioisotope therapy or unsealed source radiotherapy. In this case, what we do is uh, they plant these radioisotopes, mostly the alpha emitters, the, the alpha emitting radionuclides into inside the, the what is the, the, the tumor, inside the tumor. And since alpha particles cannot travel far, so they are not dangerous to the, uh, the other parts of the body. So they are used to kill 
those uh, tumor. Particle therapy is also now, uh, even in our country, where uh, linear accelerators, especially the proton sources are used, protons or heavier ions are used to uh, treat these tumors. So radionucleotherapy, radionucleotherapy it, it is a form of a targeted therapy, like I mentioned uh, before. <clears throat> Targeting can be radio, radioiodine better than other bodily organs. For example, hormone bound lutetium 107 and yttrium 90 to treat neuroendocrine tumors. Here, I would like to add a few points. When the Fukushima uh, Japan accident occurred, uh, there was a lot of uh, issue, even in US. The I didn't, the I didn't, I didn't uh, stop was finished in just one, one, one week after the accident. And the government intervened immediately and controlled the, the, the sale and the purchase of these iodine products, iodine tea, can tell me Because iodine, if taken, uh, if consumed by human body, they immediately go to the thyroid gland. They are absorbed thousandfold better than other bodily organs. So if, let us say we are in Mizoram, and let us say the, the, the radioactive materials, let us say from Fukushima, uh, Fukushima accident plant. To Mizoram, taken by the jet streams in the atmosphere and uh, rain down to all this radioactive uh, isotope we eat, will they will be contaminated. And if we consume those, then we'll also take in the radioactive isotopes. But if we already filled our body, if we take enough iodine already, which the, our body is capable of, then if you consume again, the contaminated one also, what it means is our thyroid glands is already full of iodine. So it cannot, it can no longer take iodine again. So we just excreted it, we'll just excrete it and in that way, you can avoid this uh, radiation threat. So targeting can also be achieved by attaching the radioisotopes to another molecule or antibody to guide it to the, the target tissue. Radioisotopes are delivered through infusion into the bloodstream or ingestion. Radium-233, strontium-89, samarium-153 are also used for bone cancer treatment. These are just some uh, pictures for th the therapy one. So the third one is national security and uh, defense. Nuclear science has a long tradition in national security since Pograntes in uh, 1971. Nuclear devices have determined the outcome of the wars. You remember the World War II and change the political boundaries of the world. Today, nuclear science plays a critical role in global politics. It protects the borders, safeguards nuclear material, and prevent the pro proliferation of nuclear weapons. And it also prevents nuclear terrorism. So the priority mission of our nation's border patrol is preventing terrorists and terrorist weapons, including weapons of mass destruction, like nuclear weapons, from entering and leaving the country. So here, if you look at the Times of India report in 2014, the portal radiation monitors are installed at many uh, exit points in India, not only airports, even at the seaports. And we wanted to have these portal radiation monitors installed in all the exit and entry points in the country. And this is undertaken 
by scientists in Baba Atom Research Center in collaboration with uh, other uh, agency. So these monitors, <clears throat> they are basically working by detecting uh, gamma rays and neutrons emitted from nuclear materials. However, suppose I have a lead box, lead box. If I put uh, my nuclear material inside the lead, then the gamma rays and the neutrons may not escape that lead box. So in that way, people can also seal their uh, nuclear material from detecting so to deal with such shielding, many scientists are now working, uh, numerous research groups at universities and national laboratories are exploring these novel detection schemes. One example is like this. You know that we have incoming muons from cosmic rays from our cosmos entering to our atmosphere. We have muons are just a particle. So we have enormous amount of muons raining down on us from the sky. And if we build a, a muon detector here, upper and lower, then if we let this vehicle pass through this muon detector, what we can see is for light element like uh, carbon, carbon-based materials or irons, and these muons, they do not interact much. And when they, they interact, they are scattered only very slightly. Mild scattering is happening. So I can see that if muon is going into this box, this particular box, and the scattering angle is only this much, then I can say that this, has, this doesn't contain high Z element. High Z element means heavy elements like uranium, plutonium. They are very, very heavy. However, this box, in this box, if those materials are there, we'll see large scattering of muons from those uh, nucleus. Then we can say that this box is containing uh, hydrate elements, which are dangerous. They are most likely be uranium or plutonium or uh, fissile materials. So in that way, we can, we can detect these sealed materials uh, from entering or leaving our country. So in this way, we can protect our country from the terrorist attack. The fourth one, uh, the role of nuclear physics, I would like to mention is carbon dating. I believe all of you are very much aware of at least the name carbon dating. It is one of the most important discoveries in the 20th century. It has revolutionized archaeology and helps us understand our past. It is basically a tool to date ages of archaeological samples. However, I'll, I'll mention that uh, since the half-life of the carbon uh, 14 is only around uh, 5,780 years, so we can date only up to around 50,000 years. And that is, it, it is accurate only up to that much, and we cannot go beyond it. Nowadays, there is also uh, a new <clears throat> technology coming up, which is uh, uranium dating. Since uranium is having uh, half-life in millions of years, so we can go back to millions of air, uh, millions of years in dating, and we can go, we can study our past even further. So in carbon dating, I'll just explain you the, the, the basic uh, principle. You know, the cosmic rays, the cosmic ray neutrons, when cosmic, uh, the cosmic ray neutrons, that is from out, uh, outer space, when they interact with the atmosphere, and you know our atmosphere is 70% nitrogen, when they interact with nitrogen 14, then it becomes nitrogen 15, which is uh, radioactive, it is unstable and it decays by beta emission. Beta emission means it emits electrons and it becomes radioactive carbon-14. So if we basically create carbon-14 from the neutrons and the nitrogen-14, which are formed, which are consumed by living organisms, 
then this carbon-14 decays, and by knowing the half-life and the decay rate of that uh, fossil fuel or whatever, then we can calculate their age. So no other scientific method has managed to revolutionize men's understanding of events in the past thousands of years, uh, thousands of years ago, and archaeology and human science use radiocarbon dating to prove or disprove theories. Over the years, carbon dating has also found applications in geology, hydrology, geophysics, atmospheric science, oceanography, paleoclimatology, and even in biomedicine. Now, this is for nuclear technology for food. So you may be um, shocked to, to hear that why should I use nuclear things uh, for our food? Because food radiation is the process of exposing food to ionizing radiation to destroy bacteria, viruses, or other microorganisms. Food radiation is one of the most extensively and thoroughly studied methods of food preservation. It dates back to the 1920s. Irradiation has then become a very standard technique to sterilize consumer and medical products from adhesive strips to surgical implants. And three different techniques have been developed by the sterilization industry that is gamma irradiation, electron beam irradiation, X-ray irradiation. Here in uh, gamma irradiation, we use cobalt source and cesium source uh, to uh, irradiate these food products. In electron beam technology, we use electron guns to irradiate these uh, food products. In X-ray radiation, we use the, the X-rays, high energy X-rays can be produced if an electron beam hits a thin metal foil, you know, the, the beam strangling, the beam strangling phenomenon. So like gamma rays, X-rays can penetrate, can, can penetrate foods to much greater depth than electron beams and they require heavier shielding for the operator. But this is the, the so if you irradiate this strawberry, let us say with our gamma rays, so this is the experiment they perform. This is 15 days storage at four degrees Celsius. And this is the non-irradiated one. And this is irradiated with just uh, 0 0.2 millirad of uh, radiation gamma rays. So you can the quality after before irradiation and after irradiation. And these are the kind of facilities that are used for food preservation. So to conclude, so I have shared just some of the ways that nuclear physics and the techniques makes a difference in our safety, health, and security. And many of today's most important advancements in medicine, materials, energy, security, climatology, and dozens of other science from, result from basic research and development in nuclear physics. And the economic impact is also huge. For example, particle beams from accelerators are used to process treat or inspect a wide range of products with a collective value of more than $500 billion. At the same time, approximately 23 million nuclear medicine proce procedures are carried out each year to diagnose and treat cancers. And in future, basic nuclear science will be a key sprint that provides ideas and insights leading to the intellectual properties and patents with which venture capitalists and entrepreneurs will shape the economies of the future. So these are a few of my references and that's all, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for informative and uh, productive lecture. So I hope, I do hope that uh, all the participant and audition audience will uh, get benefit of uh, from the lecture. So if there is any question or any queries, anything we want to ask regarding tonight's uh, lecture, tonight's topic and the related topic, uh, we will uh, have the interaction uh, session now. So you may drop the question in the chat box. Uh, yes. Uh,
Sorry, question. Those what shim shim taila. A master degree level ang ato kan practical ah practical kan na ichin ang ato kan ang kati ang radioactive kati ang practical ha kan na ichin ta kan ka i ahlo um tamang kudlo nga ba koy kan ang ahlo um tamang ti ha kan so ti kan ho chu kudlo nga ba koy kan ahlo um lawa chan chu at chu nga kan seal de ni ta. Mm. Ama are the radioactive materials can cut a locai na katia the any katuahla omani mara to can how the katu a box whom at the can circular tete ho to cool at the can and poom data. A mara to a radiation dos shim shima po reva lo da kal katsung te katia experiment hanti puna la omlo mara to and tinan example may maya Delhi professor pakat tashia to a radioactive isotope pakat. Experiment in America, I ip the monga among ip de mo. I have gone on here. I can't know. Car cut soon well, Kalo at one mona. Why are we to say the court and clark walk them though on the mate here? Among Kazai, they they shape an iron nikatu, the end of kind, read up exposure nikatuan in till the own vacuum, radiation till him shimmer hit him. อ่าปุ๊บอ่าปุ๊บเราจะเอาเรื่องอังกฤษอ่ะจีเราจะนั่นอ๋อจีเราเว้ยเราเรื่องมาตรวจข้อมูลเราเว้ยอ่ะที่
ruha aju kap lang khani de uber tam maya oh nami hi sar ahla um ve tho lo mo mitin tak sa tan hi skin problem ang si te enge mo thil poi tak sa tan na thalo tu chi kan tak sa na tuar pha ta hi om ve tho lo mo cancer te po hi ni han man jin de upai hian chon athlen te hi lo mo skin cancer lam pang te po hi a han man tan hi anin a him me wem ti kha e kan set chiang chak de wa thiu reng reng chu Asal omvek tu radiation tu sim sim itu, asal omvek ni tu amal lor tu, tu orang tu limit ni tu, tu mesti china ni tu, asal om lor, mo, tu asal sanga ni tu, asal om lor, enti dan mobile radiation tu po, tu asal sanga ni tu enti regulation omvek tu, tu mesti ni amal tu enti ada mesti operator house orang zong enti, amal lor tu tu pos tu asal om tau mai teh kan saya cuang lor, enggak mesti china orang kan mau nak china kain, kan sacrifice kan ayve ya, extra tu pos ni asal oma. Entiran ni katong, mereka wain. Tiada mod mereka tu cancer chance kerja sang via wang. Ninety percent dia tuh ini sang pamer di mana. Jadi kat dia reload dia, abars han han bars zat apa orang pay zui. Jadi ada dos control sahaja teknik yang tina anti sang sih kan ni bang kan. Asyaf tu orang itu ni tam. Baru saya le saya nu. Azing lu tu kang cite. Kami bila kahwin Misalnya makan X-ray, kau zong zong pokah, kan di paman nak cuci apa, tu nak sains dan teknologi as, sains dan fikir pokahkan, eksperimen khati tu kan, kan ada pokahin kan mandan hi, kan film korlo, ziate, leh makan macam apa, kan ni tapi pokahin program tu ada tu lorang saya sila alam ayam yang via bintarin. Ah, so next question here. New blood reactor jishang iron soya atum na as that third stage ambi ambi akan ini a byproduct ni pele in a by a byproduct a byproduct su orang ni am two thirty three ang tawa mante turang ha ani le mayatin a byproduct sim sim atu a nuclear waste sim sim atu fission react fission reaction om to katuan in i tu fission ni tu ay smaller elements ay entilan ay din ate krypton radioactive fong ate ay radioactive waste kanti Reaktor uai sangka apro apro dah tur tu ni mai. Kau beri nama buat pui mm reaktor uai kau kat yang tau tau ka. Tuan zona di dalam tu baka ini ya. I tu nai tuan nuclear weapon di dalam tu ema i mi hydrogen hydrogen bomb mesti le. Atom bom he ingat ada yang lama yang dipuji kan syarat yang terdapat tu apa? Atom bom kan hanti pangai he tu fission reaction anita ni fission he tak uranium te plutonium te mo anita atom bom kan hanti big china he tu tuan hydrogen bom kan hanti big he tu fusion reaction entah fusion reaction fusion itu tuan light elements light elements so dia akan fuse ta di tuan in a mass excess ka e is equal to mc square man kan in energy are in cm letter fusion fusion bomb ani bera maro chu a bomang chau hian kan nan ya a reactor angin khoya ma khovela technology kan nan ilo kan la control thailo uncontrol explosion chu kan cm thaya maro chu reactor anga khate control thain fusion reactor ang chu kan la cm thailo sang ni la som nga vela a technology kan nei kan bc chu Zo, zo, betul ya. Oh, oh, zo, betul ya. Eh, sah, kami power generate nanhian, misalnya mengahian afisibul vengem nuclear. Misalnya mengahian afisibul teh, lewat sanju i akulan anti yang cipte, apa kul natur dengat teh, tu ifin jad bul, angate omong aya, tin akulan hi water mai lupa, yang tinan heavy heavy water anti. Ang cita ngay ta chuchu, tuy film dila chuwa mo te ang cita ng ta. Hela ay siyam doon te ila kat yang tuy purtur kat turu doon tuka chuwa ang chuwa ng hao taklo tuka. Di nga chuwa ng te ila. Amaro chuwa ng tinan brown pudra lo ilian bula ng ato chuwa ng tilti te chuwa niya. Tuy film dila bul kher ni lawa mo. Ang sir, ang tina islay ta iron soya kan i... Medicinal use akan acen ka IV 
injection ang te joint blood infection mm. uh, injection ang te ina a a g ka isoi da ka ka e mizotong in minan soi fia sakthen eh en tilang khami radioactive isotopes bi ka ka an mani ngor ngorin an zut thumlun ngai lota a pharmaceuticals mm. anti bi ka khami ava ava mix tu ra kha mm. an siam ta ni chu chu en tinan an thil siam kha nin ขอยลายกัลปุรเมขอยลายตักสปาตาอมตุรเมเตียจิรคานินทุมินเอนซอนมิกซ์ตาอาจารย์จุกันตักสะซังซังเฮียนกันบอดี้ซังซังเฮีย
Nuclear physics, master level, that's one of our own. No longer. An own very normal here. Master Tambra, that's one in the university. Tamtaka. Subject can offer them when he a teacher as your zeal in the time. And then can university a poor condensed matter dictate and petals and to condensed matter me, Tiaman of Vanganita. Nuclear physics, he can offer low came by him, came at so well in Ivan here in. Allahu Purum do ti vangan ta. Chuti yang zel chuan. Enti nan Aligur Muslim University AMU takhu nuclear physics zil tiam chin na muna ni achan chuk professor tradeo an ni chin vangan ni kamiya kan masa. Te an ni retire nuwa ka chuan nuclear physics ka zil teilo ta. Chuti yang zel chuan pun university te professor Boras karo mlai chuan nuclear physics specialization course and offer ta. An ni pension nuwa chuan te teilo an nom tolo vangan. Master apa spesialis teilo tak kat yang jauh kan? Di sini apa azir tertu kami mihkan am laut cuan azir teilo kan di mana? Cuan cuanin, tu nak cuanin. I, a university bi kahian, cumi tu cu, cumi a cuanin nuclear physics an try hantin a turvak yang lama. Kami bawa tu research center cung a kuan. In the National, in the Minka or National Institute of, I think he'll tell us how he passed the current dinner to talk to that's what in PCD in terms of a big theater and nuclear physics as you take. And it also had the individual that their teacher and didn't came on TV. Came on, we are on to do them to the Kangalola. The token and then on the University of Professor Pohadlom does it and in me be a low level. Bandaras in the university, pakat loam tak selani nalar teh cinti yang teteh kani me. Asam pas general tak kapi cidi course top hand offer nat he om vak lewang ini dia ramat zaman. Oh, lo ame zona pakat lewu lu dia sar sering ke si entian si ini entian si ah lo ame ini. Engmo sering ke si ah. Sering guys, di mana orang siap melayan ingat soal itu, nampak ni cukup setiam je lah. Kau semua lah melayan. Hmm. Oleh azu tu, ka, setiam nak kan? Ni, ni, hey, sorry. MSC, master level lah, tuan minjir dia kalau melayan rotu research kan, tilai kan, eh, eh, kota MZT wah research. I'm productive to him and group here can share to one nuclear data you know not do nuclear code car and research group here and and what's what I mean I tell and what's what I mean so I can be some time car a a detail open can tell me see I mean should have more can hold it up man oh be she will look at it because I research to be a good answer can you sound this up on the veil to keep on a good boy put it up Hun kena isi lewani kakala tadi kan kan tidur jauh ta. Om jadi cuma ini tu nak hian ni cila hangka seilang lewat teknologi tertu Newton baron Newton kapcah terapi di ni ta baron Newton kapcah terapi Newton ini baron kapcah lewa cumi terapi orang cuma ini cancer treatment di teh tur anga teknologi hisya mekan ni ta. Kami tahu kan Newton source kan memotah, cuma Newton source tu cuma lithium, PN dan kita proton ini lithium masuk kan Newton orang cuak ta. Energy spectrum ni kita tu Newton cuan. Kami Newton spectrum akal kulit dan tu rakat kan muncuak ta matematik kan developa, akot kan siema, cuan a theoretical simulation ti natu orang ni berju. Cuma ya cuan kami yang dia tahu kan makarin German group tahu kan lau ti tu. Masa zaman dulu kau tak kah, an matematik le an kod semua kan an dikelau, kan tak buat suasa kan, kan koreka cucu, kan publis sah, cucu ni dia umai. Ah, alam om leh ni, ah sar, ah rembat ah, saya nak hujan cakap, mungkin punya kan lom, le anak kita eh kan zilai tu pukan. Emz itu ada ilmu ludi, ane cuan, eh, ane hi belajar ula, eh, teaching ada, research ada, acah em emani, eh, tiha, 
kan so ene se chuan kan hun toblam kan kan lo thleng do nga chuan vote of thanks so to win professor lading lo ya khyang ti assistant professor department of chemistry so mong Hello, my name is Hey Zanina. The webinar. Lot ling takin kan han nei thia. Lo om leng kasi a. Zana webinar lot ling takan nei thia na na thok tu te. Abi kin the physics department government certificate college. Ah, bul lo tran tu an ni a. An chung a lo thu kan soi a tin chumi bi a lo ma chuan. Hey seminar. Kan ni doa na, ani an department mala ni itu min ruang mana an siapa macam tiru al cuan kan seminar komiti lampang ten, di mai lah seminar and workshop komiti ten department physical science kan tiru ho itu mai yang physics chemistry lah matematik teh, azoi nih minhan lak saka ruang mana minhan siam saka kan lom em em ah, tin zena hian doktor bilar em ruat ta. Kan associate professor saya nak kan resource person. Aku nlu tak mai kan tan minun dua mansaka. Jadi mai pi elam acuan kan fiat ngai lo tam tak zana hien kan fiat pa in keringa. Ati mangi poin kalau pi le kan fiat ngai lo le tuan ma kalau ngai tuan ngai lo teh zana hien tam tak kan fiat pelah. Jadi ngai lo tu kan saya tak mewa mewa. Tin honda ngai po kan nasom le jadi tu mai teh. So, ngay tayo po dyan, kantan, may naroon yung hong sakzil sa di ka, kan som, ha, di sila tangi. Diyan kan koles principal, na pi sila rin siya ma. Ano yun, koles ta na tatuwa le, zilay le, zip tiyo tute, kan malam hong tura, kan masom na tun, ang tiya chuan, yung mga harsa na siyam lo din, roh man na min siyam pui char sa zila, ano yung chunga, koles principal chunga, kan lom tak may upo ka. Diyan sa na yun, Zirlai le, zirlai lau teh kan kolej staff le staff lau teh po tin ten kat teh pergi jam setiwa profesor teh tengah teh po zona hian participant sahkan anon om nua lah cuma kan lom tak meu meu ni di ka kan sayi tel do upo ka ni tel lau hetia kan thoh ho na tel lau cuan hei webinar hei emo ani lepa kan thoh ho na wang lau ting teh cak ni di ka kan sayi tel le ni sela tin David lah ming mo ya Ani hi kan teknikal lama cuan kan ron berti nani ah ani kan harus nanti zina mina solve sakzung zungah cuma kan lombo ka ini atau ber di la atau tak tak nilawin ya atau ber malam dek dek ani yang tu hey Miss Becky ada beka lang ay Omi zina hian he kan zoom di webinar ni tu ra jadi mai takin abu jatuh ingin man lah ah tin kan zoom platform teh ani mina mantira Nama private tak ali, dia uli omin hendak mentira, atau ngah, kan lom tak mewah mewah ni dia, so itel do book ani, atau mih piala macam tuan sena, kan webinar mincim mincim tu tu zong zong, atau ngah kan lom bah, nak tu kerja nak, aku ngaya minat cium nak tahu turin, kan so book cium ni eh, kan lom eh. Mungkau le, hmm, mungkau le.